What's up y'all, it's Celeste, and I originally intended to make this video like two or three months ago, like right after I had top surgery, and that obviously didn't happen. And then I also have tried to make this video quite a few times, um, this is like my 500th attempt today to make this video, and it ends up being so super long just because there is so much to talk about. So I'm actually gonna split this up into a couple of parts and try to make it so each one isn't ridiculously long, but they probably still will be but I wanna give as much information as possible. So what I'm gonna do is talk about all this stuff that I took with me when I had top surgery and kind of go through all of the items that I needed. And so it's gonna be kind of like a top surgery packing list, but I'm also gonna give a few other little tips and things to do with my experience um, that first week. Um, I did go to Dr. Garamoni, so depending on if you go to a different surgeon, you might have a little bit different uh, experience or, you know, things that do or don't apply. For example, I had drains and not every surgeon uses drains. But for the most part, I think most of what I'm gonna be talking about is fairly universal for, for anybody that's having top surgery. The other thing I wanna note is that my mom and I went down to South Florida together. She was the one who took care of me my first week post-op and we rented an Airbnb house. So if you are financially able to do that, I definitely recommend it as opposed to a hotel. Um, plenty of people stay in hotels and it's a, it's totally fine. It's a, a perfectly fine way to recover, but um, for me personally, I just felt better being in a house where I had a little bit more privacy and things were just a little bit more comfortable and sort of homey and uh, we had a full kitchen and everything. Um, so it did make things just a little bit easier and more comfortable. So with all that said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about clothing, pillows, and hygiene items. Then in the next video, I'll talk about food, medicine, and first aid. So starting with clothing, the most important thing is you want everything to be very comfortable and very easy to get off and on. So starting at the bottom, uh, for shoes, um, I got these slip-on shoes at Walmart for like seven or eight dollars and they are very easy to get off and on. I don't have to tie anything or lace anything. I don't even have to pull them on. I just can basically step into them. And so these are great. I've actually continued to wear these since I've been home just because they're so easy to put on. Um, and again, they were really cheap. So definitely recommend something like that or flip flops or, or really anything that's just really easy to get on. Same principle applies to clothes. So for the bottom, any kind of boxer shorts or basketball shorts or, or anything like that. And then uh, for long pants, sweatpants or pajama pants or anything with an elastic waist, that's really gonna be your best bet because you're not gonna want to have to be buttoning things and zipping things. and you're also definitely not gonna be wanting to like try to pull on skinny jeans or anything that's difficult to get off and on. Obviously the temperature is gonna vary depending on where you are and what time of year it is, but I personally recommend bringing both shorts and pants just because you never know what it's gonna be like. Um, I mostly wore shorts because I was in South Florida in October, which was still pretty hot, but I did wear pants sometimes. And especially if you're going to Dr. Garamoni, his office is freezing, especially the exam rooms are just freezing. So I definitely recommend wearing some sweatpants or something when you go to see him. For shirts, you're gonna probably want something that either buttons or zips up the front because it's kind of difficult to get stuff on over your head. So I just got all these button up shirts from a thrift store for a dollar each. And I purposely got a size up from what I normally wear because you are gonna have some swelling and probably bandages and compression garment of some kind. And um, I had drains. So all of that takes up a decent amount of room under a shirt. The other thing is that baggier shirts are just easier to get off and on. Um, I got three shirts, which I thought would be plenty because I was just thinking about that first week and I knew I wasn't gonna be able to take a shower. So I figured I would just wear the same stuff over and over again. And, uh, but I wasn't really thinking about like once I got home that I would still probably wanna be wearing these kinds of shirts. Um, which I did for another couple of weeks after I got home. And it also turned out that the cleaner that I was able to get every day, um, even though I wasn't able to take a shower, being able to wear clean clothes every day really kind of made me feel better. So um, after a few days, I think it was like day four or five post-op, my mom and I went uh, to some thrift stores down there and got some other shirts for me to wear once I got back home. And the other thing that we got was this pajama top, which also buttons up the front. And um, so I didn't actually wear this the first week post-op, but if I had had it with me, uh, you know, at the beginning, I would have. I definitely wore it every single night once I got home for, I guess, about two weeks. And it's so soft, it's so comfortable. And I mean, I did sleep in these other button-up shirts when I was sleeping, sitting up. Um, 
uh, the first week post-op and they were fine but you know once I got home and was actually sleeping in a bed even though I was still sleeping sitting up um, this was just so much more comfortable and you know I do see shirts like this at thrift stores all the time um, you know they usually have some kind of like men's pajama shirts this is I guess a women's shirt but they are pretty easy to find so I definitely recommend that and then you might want to bring a hoodie or something that zips up the front just to have an extra layer if you get cold the last item of clothing I'm going to talk about is compression socks, which are recommended for post-op because if you're not moving around very much, you can get blood clots in your legs and that's obviously not good. Um, but I only wore these for like the first day because I did move around a decent amount. Um, I mean, I was like sitting a lot, but I would sit in one area and then I would get up and move around and do some stuff. And then I would, you know, sit in a different area and then I would get up and move around. So it was kind of similar to how I am at home, honestly. So I didn't feel like I really needed to wear those for, for very long. Uh, I didn't feel like they were really necessary. I also made it a point to get up and move around whenever I could. Um, you don't want to be doing anything that's getting your heart rate up. You don't want to be doing anything really strenuous or, or anything that's what you would call a workout or anything like that. But just moving around a decent amount and just you know stretching your legs and, and getting some flexibility in there um, does help with the healing process because you know it just kind of keeps your body working the way that it's supposed to work. So again, do not overdo it. Don't be jumping around or anything like that, but um, just walking around every once in a while can really help. Shortly before I had top surgery, I made a video talking about some of the stuff I was doing to prepare, and you can watch that if you click up there. Um, but one of the things I did was I made some stuff, and there were three items I made basically. The first one was this drain pouch, which is basically like a little apron that you can put your drains in these pockets and then has a Velcro waistband. I found this to be really useful because my drains were clipped to the front of my ace bandage, which was fine, but then when I would sit down, um, especially if I would like lean back at all, they would kind of, gravity would kind of just like pull them to the sides and then if I tried to have my arm now down next to my side, then I kind of felt like I was knocking into them and it was just kind of annoying. So having them in here basically just always kept them toward the front and I like it always kept them kind of corralled in so that they weren't like moving around as I moved around. So I wouldn't call this a necessity by any means. And also my stomach started to swell during the first week post-op. Um, and so like the more it would swell, the more this would kind of like poke out, which was kind of weird. But uh, you know, other than looking a little bit goofy, um, I did like having this and I liked having my drains kind of tucked away. So if you want to make something like this, I will put a tutorial in the description that I kind of modified a little bit, but it's basically the same idea. Um, but you can also get uh, little craft aprons at like Home Depot or Lowe's or somewhere like that that are like a dollar. So if you want to use something like that, that works too. Second item I made was this seatbelt pillow, which I definitely do recommend having something like this because um, when you have a seat, like a shoulder strap of the seatbelt, um, it basically goes like right across where you just had surgery and it's not very comfortable. The first week post-op when I had all the bandages on, it wouldn't have been that bad. But once I got the bandages off, um, I, it felt like there just felt like there was a lot of pressure there. So having this um, over the seatbelt uh, or like in between the seatbelt and me basically just kind of gave me a little bit more cushioning and kind of dispersed the pressure a little bit so that it wasn't all just like right on that area. I used this for about two months post-op every time I was in the car as either a passenger or a driver and I just found it to be a lot more comfortable. The last thing I made was this gigantic pillow which uh, I mostly used while I was sleeping, but I also did um, did have it when I would just sit there like playing on my phone or something like that. It was nice to be able to rest my arms on something. And the best thing about this is that it has a po pocket in the front, so I was able to keep my phone in it all the time. And I also kept the remote for the fan and light uh, overhead, which was very convenient because then I could change those myself I didn't have to like call my mom in the middle of the night to come turn the fan on for me or whatever. So that was very convenient. Um, and you know, you could do the same thing with like a TV remote or something like that. So I did really like having it the first week, but since I've gotten home, I really have no use for it at all. Um, it's kind of a weird shaped pillow. So I would say like, if you are going to make something, I would just probably make a regular square pillow and just put a pocket on it. Um, just because like the pocket was the most useful thing, but I definitely wouldn't put this on a list of things that I really highly recommend. But the last pillow I'm going to be talking about is this neck pillow, which I did not make. I bought this and it's like a memory foam kind of thing. 
but um, I slept sitting up for six weeks post-op because I had to sleep on my back and it was difficult for me to sleep lying down uh, without trying to roll around. So I just slept sitting up the whole time. And this is the only way I could have done that. It gave me neck support and it was also nice because I typically do try to roll on my sides and I was able to just kind of tilt my head to the sides and kind of trick myself into thinking I was sleeping on my sides a little bit, um, you know, as much as possible. So I definitely, definitely would recommend having a pillow like this. The last category for this video is hygiene. And I don't have an electric toothbrush, but my mom does. So I just got my own toothbrush head and we were able to share the actual unit and just swap these out. Um, and the good thing about this is that it kind of cuts down on the amount of like back and forth that you kind of have to do with a manual toothbrush, which when you normally do it, you don't really think about it, but when you're sore here and when you have limited mobility, it is a little bit more difficult. I mean, it's not like unmanageable or anything. Obviously a lot of people do it, but it just makes it a little bit easier if you happen to have an electric toothbrush or if you want to get one of those like battery powered ones, I'm sure those would work too. Um, so I wouldn't put that at the top of the list, but it was nice to have. I was instructed to use Hibiclens on my entire body the night before and morning of surgery. Um, and then also to use it for cleaning my chest post-op um, once I was able to start showering, which again for me was a week post-op. Um, and I wasn't really given any instructions on how long to use this for. So I actually used it for like probably about four weeks. Um, so when I was like five weeks post-op was around the time I stopped using it. And I only used like a quarter of the bottle. So I remember when I was buying this, I wasn't really sure how much I was gonna need. And so I got this 16 ounce bottle, um, like hoping that it would be enough. And it's like way more than enough. So if you're getting this, you probably could get away with, with like a four ounce bottle, but definitely an eight ounce bottle would be more than enough because I'm pretty sure I used this for way longer than I needed to. And I still have like tons of it left. For cleaning my body, I got these Huggies baby wipes, which I had seen some people talk about that they didn't like cleaning with baby wipes because they either would like dry out the skin or there was some kind of residue left over or something like that. So I got these because they are the natural care uh, kind of Huggies baby wipes. And um, you know, a little bit of that is kind of greenwashing, but they are alcohol free and they are um, perfume free and they just generally seem to not have as many additives kind of in them. So um, so that's why I chose them and I didn't have any trouble with them. I didn't feel like I had any residue or, um, or drying really or anything like that. And I felt pretty clean afterwards, so I really liked that. So what we would do is my mom would actually use these on me. I wasn't really able to, to do much with them myself. And so to kind of minimize the awkwardness of her cleaning me, um, I would leave my underwear on and she would help me get the rest of my clothes off and then she would use these to wipe like everywhere that wasn't covered by either my underwear or the compression bandage. And um, she would, you know, get me as clean as possible with that. And we used a chair just to help like, um, so either she could sit down and more easily reach my legs or I could sit down and she could do my feet. And then after that, we would go in the bathroom and I would face away from her. She would pull my underwear off and then she would leave. And then I would use these Summer's Eve wipes um, to clean that part of myself. And then she would come back in and put some clean underwear on me. So that just kind of minimized like the, the awkwardness of that whole part of getting clean. And then to wash my face, I used this uh, cleanser, which is basically Cetaphil. This is the Publix brand. But good thing about this is you don't have to get your face wet. You can just wipe this on and then just wipe it off with a cloth. So I actually did use a wet washcloth, but you don't have to do that. So this is really good for, for cleaning your face. Then since I couldn't take a shower, I used this dry shampoo, which helped keep me from being really greasy. And then I normally use just regular stick deodorant, but it's really hard to do that when you can't raise your arm very high. So I just got this spray deodorant uh, slash antiperspirant, and I was able to just like raise my arms enough that my mom could spray underneath and it worked really well. Everything else hygiene related, I was able to do pretty normally, like put my contacts in and put moisturizer on my face and things like that. That's it for part one of this video. Stay tuned for part two, where I will talk about food, medicine, and first aid stuff. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you can leave them below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of my future content. 
And I've heard a few people say that all my videos are not showing up in their subscription box for some reason. So in order to make sure that you see all my videos, you might wanna click that bell icon next to the subscribe button and that will notify you whenever I have something new. So thank you for subscribing and thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time in part two. Thank you.